Welcome to this episode of Suji Ting live stream. I am Xu Xingchen, bringing you this live from the heart of spicy food, Chengdu, the capital city of southwest China, Sichuan province. The city is now holding a food fair dubbed the Chengdu Panda Asian Food Festival, a sideline event to the ongoing conference on dialogue of Asian civilizations in Beijing. In addition to hundreds of different types of regional cuisines from both home and abroad, since we're in Sichuan, we'll have a talk about hot pot. In the city of Chengdu alone, there are over 7,000 hot pot restaurants, a really large number for just one type of cuisine. Yet, to learn about the history and the proper way to eat hot pot, join me with me here is Hannah from uh, local station, Chengdu TV station. Welcome, Hannah. And we have Aaron Li Peng, originally from Tianjin, yes. and now living in the city and also pursuing your yes. doctoral degree in bioengineering and yes. also teaching people English. And then we have Jonathan Kat, who has been living here in Chengdu for over two decades, 21 years to be exact. And in fact, Jonathan helped open this hot pot restaurant that we're currently sitting in. So, Jonathan, your story is quite interesting because back in 2016, when you first opened uh, because of Fit Hot Pot, it was the first foreigner uh, open hot pot restaurant in the city, and I believe even today is the only one, only foreign national open hot pot place in the city. So what are some of the reasons for you to jump on board with your partners to open this place? Well, before I opened this place, I was doing uh, a lot of television gourmet shows, and I always enjoyed introducing hot pot places the most. Mm. So uh, I tried so many of the hot pot places in the city. I got an idea of uh, what I would like to do. I'd like to open my own and share my favorite flavors of hot pot with everyone. Mm. But actually, the, the reason that you got into television, got into making gourmet shows, is that you participated in an international pepper, chili pepper eating contest, right? Yes, in 2005, at the Chengdu International uh, also Food Festival, mm -hmm. uh, I participated in the hot chili pepper eating contest. Out of 2,000 contestants, I made it wow. to the finals. Mm. And for the finals, we had to eat 50 of this kind of pepper, whole pepper, but we had to chew them up completely wow. uh, for time. Mm -hmm. So about two minutes, wow. uh, finish whole plate. I was still in top 10, mm -hmm. but uh, everyone started interviewing me. And so uh, the second day, mm -hmm. Uh, Chengdu TV and Sichuan TV and many other TV stations wanted me to start doing shows for them. So I believe your love for spicy food is one of the reasons why that you came here in Chengdu. And also, yes. I love spicy food, I love hot pot, I can eat hot pot very frequently, but Hannah, you're from mm -hmm. local, yeah. and I bet people from Chengdu or Sichuan or even nearby Chongqing city, they eat hot pot very frequently. And as I have mentioned, there are over 7,000 hot pot restaurants here in the city alone. But during the peak time, about three to four years ago, there are over 10,000 hot pot restaurants. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the reasons, from your ob observation as a journalist working for a regional TV station, that uh, you know, hot pot is so popular right now? Okay, yeah, uh, firstly I will tell you, I am an uh, authentic hot pot fan. Mm -hmm. I eat hot pot once a week. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and it's very common. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Chengdu. Mm -hmm. And I think why the hot pot becomes so popular these days, uh, there are four aspects, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, first one is the history that hot pot has. Mm -hmm. uh, hot pot has a uh, history over 1,700 years wow. uh, since the Xi Jin dynasty. There were words to describe the Chengdu people uh, eating hot pot around the world, mm -hmm. around the table. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, so it has uh, um, a mass. Um, customer space mm -hmm. uh, and secondly I think it's the um, function the hot pot has it has the <coughs> deep um, humidification function mm. uh, I mean uh, the climate in Chengdu is very humidity mm -hmm. um, um, it's very humid yes it's very wet here yeah especially in summer so eating hot pot will make people uh, sweaty easily mm -hmm. and feel comfortable yeah. yeah and the third thing I think uh, is the dishes, the variety dishes the hot pot has. Mm -hmm. mm, uh, in my opinion, uh, my favorite three, top three meat um, dishes are the ox, ox, ox tribe, ox tribe yep. yeah, and uh, the uh, intestines. A, a pig intestine. Yeah, pig yeah. intestine. 
and uh, throat, pig's throat, oh, pig. pig's throat and duck's throat, right? Oh, there are pig. two oh, kinds oh, of throat, oh, oh, huang hou oh, and yang and yeah. uh, Ya uh, or okay. so okay. ox throat, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow, nice. They are my favorite three top meat uh -huh. uh, because they taste very really fragile uh -huh. and extremely delicious. Uh -huh. What about the, the, the final the, aspect? The final aspect is uh, is the uh, dipping sauce. Mm -hmm. The dipping sauce at least one um, hot pot at yeah. least I have. Mm, say a dozen of dipping sauce. Mm -hmm. It can meet different people yes. and different tastes. Wow, yeah. yeah, definitely we can see how it has a it can fit fits a lot of pe different people's tastes mm -hmm. and of course the deep root in history. Mm -hmm. And speaking of humidity, speaking of the weather, because Aaron, you're from yes. northern part of China, you're yes. from a a coastal city. Yes. It's only half an hour on high speed rail yeah. from Beijing. Yes. Quite a different, very far. So what are some of the reasons for you actually to choose leaving here in Chengdu? I believe it's for almost two decades already. Yeah, yes. Uh, I think maybe the first important reason why I choose to live here is um, definitely related to the food mm. here. Because, uh, you know, my hometown is a coastal city. Yep. Uh, let me take seafood as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the only way we should uh, cook seafood is to put them in a fresh water yeah. and then boil them yeah. and then put them into the mm, deep sauce mm -hmm. saucer and uh, uh, when I first got Chengdu I found Chengdu people put a lot of seasoning material yes. in the seafood and uh, I think it's totally different uh, it's maybe a new world a brand new world mm -hmm. to me so it's so attractive wow. yes and, and I think maybe the second reason is that the uh, slow tempo of life mm -hmm. of local people here. Yes. Uh, and uh, when I first got here, I saw so many tea houses here mm -hmm. on the street. And uh, uh, I think the most interesting thing is that no matter you are rich or poor, mm -hmm. you can f eventually find a place that suits your financial ability. Yes. Because uh, if you have a, a hundred Chinese yuan, you can find a very a luxurious tea house and enjoy there on maybe a whole day. Mm -hmm. But if you have only 10 Chinese yuan, you can also find a very, very nice place. Mm -hmm. um, although the tea is not maybe um, as, as perfect as the expensive one, but I think yeah. it's also a very, very um, natural day for you. So actually um, that's what I also found is kind of attractive in yes. Chengdu is like the society, the community is very inclusive. Yes. And it's like the cuisine here. Um, but then I think enough talking and we start to know each other a bit more. But then let's talk about hapan. And uh, there's a pot in front of us and uh, and a lot of different dishes. Some some might be kind of scary looking to our foreign <laughs> viewers from outside of China. But then let's first talk about the hot pot. Right now we only have the dry ingredients here. And uh, as I mentioned, 7,000 hot pot places here in, Ch in Chengdu. And I believe 70% of hot pot Places open across China are in fact, in fact Sichuan style spicy hot pot and each brand they have their own secrets about their formula mm -hmm. making the soup but what are some of the key ingredients? I'm going to ask Jonathan first. Well, for this uh, Chengdu hot pot, uh, the, uh, the cow's uh, oil. Yeah, the, the beef fat. The beef fat and of course the chili pepper and the Sichuan peppercorn mm -hmm. and uh, you know, salt and some different seasonings and spices. Mm -hmm. Those are basically the main ingredients. Mm. But then I've heard because like Chongqing, the near is only like three hours drive from Chengdu. They also eat hot pot very frequently, and there are actually, I mean, for me, I think they taste the same. They spi they're spicy and they're they're flavorful, but there are actually difference, right, between the two styles. Yes, um, the Chongqing hot pot is it. It takes the the cow's fat and it just sometimes it just puts a new block in mm -hmm. without treating it with uh, the spices yes. like with ours. Before we put in the chili peppers mm -hmm. uh, and before we put in the Sichuan peppercorns and other spices, we boil the fat with. Uh, uh, ginger mm -hmm. and celery yes. and a few other things to get rid of the really really cow fat flavor mm -hmm. and so it's much more delicate flavor mm -hmm. than the Chongqing hot pot. So what about you guys? Do, do you find those two different types of hot pot kind of different to your taste? 
Darren? Uh, I think uh, maybe the taste of Chongqing hot pot is more like the characteristic of Chongqing people. Mm. Because it, I think it's more open and okay. more oh, maybe um, aggressive, I think. Okay. <laughs> because the fiery taste, yeah. the burning taste. So sound. strong, so yeah, strong, yeah. yes. And I think the Chengdu hot pot is more like the uh, um, the gentle characteristic of Chengdu people, local people. Mm. It's more, um, I think it's multi-level. Mm. It's multi-level, yeah. Because uh, when you first taste it, and maybe the only taste you will feel is just spice. But mm -hmm. uh, when you take the second bite, or maybe you will think it's very, very... Um, it's a layer, the yes, layers are different. Yes, yes, so I think it's totally different. So what about you, Hannah? Because um, you're from Chengdu, do you prefer the Chengdu style or Chongqing style? I prefer Chengdu style because Chengdu's um, hot pot spicy is tastes milder than oh, yeah, Chongqing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Chongqing is more harder, I think. Okay. And I used I used to be in uh, Chongqing and mm -hmm. eating the hot pot here. Yes. And one thing I find is very different from Chengdu hot pot is the dipping sauce. They don't they, they don't have an um, seasoning oil. Oh, sesame they, oil. Yeah, oil. yeah. They use the um, hot pot soup. They just use yeah, the soup, soup with some. Yeah, soup directly. Okay. Yeah, as the dipping sauce. So that that's. Um, that's that's very thing. interesting. Yeah. But then I'm going to ask um, a waiter to help us to pour the broth yeah. and okay. to get it boiled. Uh, 服务员可以帮我们那个上下汤吗？点下火。So for the broth is. It's also kind of, it's a broth, it's not just water, right? Uh, yes, uh, there's a few different kinds that you can use. Uh, what, the one we're currently using is the, uh, a bone broth. Mm -hmm. And some people, some restaurants actually use uh, tea wow. as a broth. Mm -hmm. And some, just to cut costs, they just use plain mm -hmm. hot water. Well, yeah. but, but speaking of the tea, why using tea? Well, the tea is mostly for the Chongqing hot pot because mm -hmm. if they don't treat the the cow fat the way that we do in Chengdu, then it can get really, you know, cow fat flavory, mm -hmm. and that kind of cuts a little bit down on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think it makes it more palatable. Oh, okay, so the, and the tea kind of freshen out the the, the, the pungent yeah. flavor, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So while the, uh, the the pot is being cooked. And uh, you have mentioned about the condiment, uh, different uh, dipping sauce. So what are some of the iconic dipping sauces used here in Chengdu? And also, uh, we're going to just help ourselves to, mm -hmm. to the dipping sauces. Um, Jonathan or Hannah, who want to start first with the uh, dipping sauce? Yeah, I, I just want to say one thing is, when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. I, I know the hot pot is a daily food in mm -hmm. our diet. Really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and we only, uh, in dipping, um, dipping sauce, we only use uh, oyster oil, sesame like oyster? oil, and uh, garlic. Oh, wow. Garlic, wow. Yeah, but uh, with uh, time so passing, there are many different oh. mm -hmm. mm, ingredients. Yeah, I, I, so, so maybe just, it means the city are more uh, inclusive and diversified yeah. right now. So we're probably just going to introduce uh, a few of the, 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 the content or the things that we're going to use in our uh, dipping sauce for our viewers. So we have right there, I believe, is green onions, right? Yes. And this is actually pickled mustard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a kind mustard of pickle, it's very salty. Yes. And this is the chili pepper that Jonathan <laughs> ate 50 in two minutes uh, 20 years ago. Yes. And it's chopped up. Mm -hmm. And right here is cilantro, uh, minced garlic, and vinegar, mm -hmm. as I requested, vinegar and, and oyster sauce. Mm -hmm. And then we have the sesame oil. Mm -hmm. But right now, speaking of sesame oil, I found Sometimes you also use blended oil, right? You don't just use pure sesame oil. Yes, um, t that's another way to cut costs a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes s pure sesame oil is a little bit too strong. Ah. So it's also OK. Yeah. OK. Do you need a sesame oil? Oh, of course. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you want sesame oil? Yeah. What Thank about you, your errands? Yes. Thank you. Um, so, Hannah or Jonathan, who do you want to start first to share as your secret formulation of your dipping sauce? I'll probably ask Hannah first because uh, you. Uh, yeah, I, I, maybe I. Um, mine is a traditional one. Is a traditional one? That's yeah, good. Yeah. Many local people mm -hmm. prefer this style, I think. So, with the sesame oil and. Sesame oil and, and the. And this a little. Thank you. And the garlic is, do people put salt in the garlic? 
Oh, uh, no, it just it's it's pure garlic. Pure minced garlic. Mm. And, uh, and and then uh, and oysters. oysters. If people want to add the uh, salt afterwards, mm -hmm. that's provided. Oh, okay. But the, the hot pot is already quite salty, so yes. I never need to add extra. Mm -hmm. So that's, so that's your traditional yeah. Chengdu style. Chengdu style, yeah. <laughs> so Jonathan, do you, uh, similar or? Well, do actually, a, a little bit different because mm. actually a lot of restaurants, at least in Chongqing, yeah. if they see the oyster sauce, they they mm. won't let you. They, they, they won't let you, or they just they, don't serve they, it. They, they, they just don't serve it. Okay. So it's oh, not yeah. really that traditional. Mm -hmm. And the oyster sauce, it it does have a couple of benefits. It's a little bit sweet. So it does cut down a little bit on the spiciness. But I wouldn't consider it very traditional. I would say the most traditional would be the minced, the minced garlic. Mm -hmm. I like to add a lot. Yeah. And actually, I would say that to eat this kind of hot pot, you mm -hmm. pretty much require to have yeah. the minced garlic. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, you can either have the, the, the oil from the pot, or you mm -hmm. can have the, this sauce yeah the, the sesame, sesame oil, oil. Yeah. and that's generally the way i eat it it's just these two <coughs> things uh, no other things no cilantro uh, or occasionally after i've had uh you know half the meal uh -huh. to add a little bit of flavor i uh -huh. add some vinegar oh okay and what about you, Aaron? I think the most important one is this garlic. Oh, because, uh, you know, I love garlic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, but uh, I'm in a different way. Mm. Because, uh, you know, I'm a PhD candidate of bioengineering. Yes. Because I know garlic is, has a function of killing bacteria. Yeah. So I think it's very, very important because I'm a little care about the sanitation. Ah, yeah, okay. so this is this one is very, very important for me. So you will, uh, because you already poured yourself some, yeah. some okay. oil, you need, you need garlic. Okay. And what about other things? Do you put uh, and the, I think like maybe a little uh, green onion. Green onions. Yeah, that's good. I think that's enough for me. Okay. Okay. So for me, mm. my is special because actually, since I'm not from Chengdu, I'm from northern part of China. I'm from Taiyuan, Shanxi, which is very oh. famous for its oh. vinegar. Yeah. So what I eat <laughs> usually is just a lot of cilantro. I'm going to serve myself. <laughs> um, probably half of this. Whoa. I love cilantro, Whoa. the flavor. <laughs> And then just vinegar, and I will pour a lot of vinegar. It's kind of funny when I'm ordering vinegar here in Chengdu in like Sichuan, uh, like just when they have stir fries, they just don't get me. Like, do you want vinegar? <laughs> What's for? <laughs> right? But but that's what I prefer. You know, just oh, yeah. cilantro with vinegar. Okay. And I, I also use the dry oh, dry nice. dry. I mean, it's called gandhi. Yes, this oh. is also quite important. <laughs> yeah, it's especially for things like uh, that dish there. Yes. It's got the uh, chili pepper, it's got the pepper, citron peppercorn, it's mm -hmm. got some sesame seeds, and of course, the onion. Yes. It's very simple, but mm -hmm. it's, it gets the job done. Of course, and that flavor is, 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 is the, the key to have a really nice hot pot here. So the, the, the pot is already boiling, and we have uh, a few iconic dishes here. We all have, have like sliced beef right there, but that's quite regular, right? Yes. Yeah, and the, <laughs> I think the fun part of eating hot pot is to eating to eat all those animal organs and to mm. be an adventurer, mm -hmm. an adventurous de diner, right? That's mm -hmm. a very traditional way to eat. Hot pot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right here we have ox tribe. Yes. And this is a uh, pig kidney, I believe, and we we'll also have pig intestine, mm -hmm. intestine. Uh, we'll probably start with the. Uh, the, the tribe, right? Tribe, yeah. Mm. So Sounds since good. Jonathan, you own a hop out restaurant, just tell us what's the proper way to well, eat ox tribe. So you, you know the world. Yes, uh, uh, but I, I don't know how. There is, we have a special saying, but I don't know how to say it in English. It's like seven uh, up, eight down. Seven up, eight down. And actually.
seconds is about. Ten seconds. So I I prefer about sixteen seconds. Oh, six. But but will we be too too chewy? Uh, I wouldn't go any more than that. Okay. Uh, that's just to make sure it's really make sure that it's done. Okay. So shall we actually serve ourselves? How about ourselves? Yeah. How about ourselves? So for me, when even though I said that I love eating hot pot, but I don't really care about how I eat it and in the correct order to put food in, or how much, how long I, that I should cook my, for example, like ox tribe or my meat, etc. But actually, for beef, especially sliced beef, it doesn't require a lot of cooking time either, right? No, for something like this, you swirl it around and the color changes. Mm -hmm. It's not red anymore. Mm. Then it's done. I mean, I think the key to a really nice hot pot is like you need to adjust the, the fire. Like, how much fire do you want? <laughs> you want to boil or if you want to spill? Oh. Yep. I think it's uh, maybe a very interesting part of Chengdu hot pot because, you know, in North China, we just put all the food into the pot. Together, pot. yeah. Yeah, and wait and wait and wait. But you have to. Like do one, like this. Yeah. yes. Yeah. So you have to focus on the pot, and you have yeah. to devote all yourself on this. So I think it's very, very different and very interesting part. Because actually, yes. in Chinese, like we call it shuang huo guo. Yeah. It's basically yes. like, as, as Zhang Han mentioned, like squirrel it, squirrel it around, and it's not like a just a, a mix of all the dishes yes. put together. And yes. It's a shuang. It's like we we cook themselves and yes. one after another and take a time take time with it, right? So what about the correct order to actually eat with hot pot? Should we do with meat first, or should we do with the vegetables first? Uh, generally, uh, the recommended way is to start with the meat first. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. especially the, the tripe is a favorite for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So um, when everything, sometimes we might put some things in, and they start cooking, and then we would start eating swirling the tribe mm -hmm. so we could have that first mm. um, and then eventually get to some of the vegetables and usually the potatoes go in last yes. because it, it's kind of starchy yeah and it'll it will ruin the, the soup yes. in some way yeah so we should try some more shall we right yes so actually because Aaron you're from northern part of China yes um, are you happy with the with spicy food here in Chengdu? I have to say, uh, at first, I, I, I could not stand this spicy food because... Take the truck. Yes. Uh, <laughs> because we, we don't even eat almost any spicy food in, back in North China. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think maybe the coastal city people more like the uh, original taste of the food. Yes. yes. So let's just put some um, garlic, uh, maybe a little ginger, mm -hmm. and I think that's all the seasoning material we use back in North China. But uh, when I stay here for maybe uh, after one year, I get used to it, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm a kind of addicted to it. Wow. Because, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I think it, it has a magic. Because I was, because as we have mentioned, Chengdu is now holding this food fair, and I've yeah. been speaking to a lot of different brand, yes. uh, uh, restaurant owners, and they've told me that actually spicy food is somewhat addictive. Yeah. And then that's why why the, there is they are expanding so fast spicy food. Yes. And the power popularity is rising so fast. So what's your take on this? Do you think like spicy food is somewhat addictive? I think not only is it addictive, but hot pot is especially what what was the word you just said? Did you say magical or yeah, magical? Yes. Magical. I, yes. I agree with that. Yes. Uh, because. It's not just the flavors in the pot, in the in the in the flame, but it's also the atmosphere. Yes. Uh, hot pot restaurants really have a really good local atmosphere. Yes. Yes. Actually, someone just posted a question online, and uh, a really good question. Someone asked, "If I cannot eat spicy, is there other flavor?" <laughs> I'm going to yes. show you. Even though we're using this, we call it Hongguo. It's uh, red yeah. oil, yes. spicy, red oil. Yes. spicy yeah. pot. I'll have a different kind of pot. 
uh, in Chinese it's called Yuanyang Guo, yes. but it's basically just two flavor hot pot. Yes. So one side, you know, if you have friends eating like spice, uh, prefer spicy food, yes. you can put it right in one compartment yeah, you in your one part, and the other one you can put it just like broth, toma tomato, tomato soup, yes. and a broth or chicken broth, and etc. Yeah. They have a lot of different varieties of different kinds of soup for hot pot. But then, since I believe anyone who I, I recommend people who, who are visiting oh. Sichuan. Chengdu probably should eat a spi try the spicy first. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know? yeah. Yeah. try the spicy. Or, and if, or you, I believe people can actually build up their tolerance about spicy food. Yes. And for me, I can remember when I was younger, I don't eat a lot of spicy food, yes. but now mm -hmm. I just <laughs> I love spicy food so much. Um, and there is also another question set, uh, uh, is asking us what what should I pay attention if I eat hot pot for the first time. Mm. The, the taste <laughs> of the spicy may have the the different it, it, mild spicy, mm -hmm. uh, strong spicy, and medium oh, spicy. Yeah. You can order. Yeah, you have different yeah. levels of spiciness. Mm -hmm. yes. You can build up from something mm -hmm. that is mild, more to medium spicy, and to super spicy, super hot, or even mm -hmm. actual spicy. But uh, Jonathan, what about you know when you first? I mean, how how long was it? How long did you, I mean when was it, when was the first time for you to eat hama? Uh, it was over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, in over, China? Over or? 21 years ago in, mm -hmm. in China. At that time, I hadn't heard of hot pot uh, before, before mm -hmm. I came. Mm -hmm. And when I came after a few days, a local friend took me for hot pot. And because he knew I liked hot peppers, but mm. uh, I had never had the sesame, not the sesame, but the uh, Sichuan peppercorn, mm. and so it was just the ma la. Yeah. It just makes a a perfect combination, yeah. especially for the Sichuan weather and the Sichuan lifestyle. But then, because you know, a lot of my Western friends sometimes they are scared of that sensation after eating, for example, like Sichuan peppercorn, because they feel like their lips not their lips numb, or their tongue is burned. Mm -hmm. Do you think they should get over with it and? Or um, how how can the people say oh I uh, that's something that for me or that's not something that I, I think can... uh, they should enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it my first time, and uh, it's just it's an enjoyable experience because you know uh, food, gourmet food, it has so many different flavors, so yes. many different experiences, and that's just one another magical experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned about eating hot pot make you easier to sweat. I'm sweating right now. But shall we move on to the next dish that we're going to tell our viewers from both home and abroad? Uh, and of course, remember to follow us on like Twitter, on YouTube, and of course our official Weibo account, so that you can keep up with us on special occasions like you know dining with us. So the next dish that we're going to tell to share is the the pig pig kidney, kidney. sliced pig kidney. So I'm going to ask. Jonathan, to tell us how to eat <laughs> kidney. Well, this one is also like the uh, uh, tribe, it, uh, but it probably doesn't take even as long. Mm. It, it's it's very tender. Yes. And it cooks extremely fast. But unlike the tribe, it doesn't go in the sesame oil. Mm -hmm. It goes in the Dried red pepper dish. Wow, is there a reason for that? Um, it's probably because it's it has you know a flavor of you know. Uh, Do you think just because the flavor is too pungent? It, it, yes, mm. it's 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 it's, it's a acquired taste and it's it's not like it's not like meat or tripe. It's very mm. you know everyone's accustomed to. It. Yes. So right. okay. that kind of takes away the uh, excessive the meaty flavor yes. or kidney flavor. The kidney, it takes away the kidney flavor. Yeah. So, I haven't m mentioned this multiple times, but uh, you know, when I'm, I love hot pot, but a lot of time when I'm eating hot pot, I don't really care about the rules. Sometimes I overcook things. But what about you, Hannah? Because you grew up basically eating hot pot very frequently. Do you follow these rules? No, I think there is no no room for me to eat, eat hot pot. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the, this dish. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, yes. um, we girls um, 
the don't water it. <laughs> <laughs> but but do you eat this? I I can eat it. Okay. Actually, but I I don't. Mm, so not every day. Uh, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every um, every so time. So you guys eat this eat kidney in America? Um, not normally. Oh. Um, you can buy it, but mm. it's not. Maybe in Chinatown. Excuse me. In Chinatown. In Chinatown. Oh, uh, well, no. uh, any any butcher uh, can, oh. can uh, provide it for you, but how to cook it? Uh, I, I in America, <laughs> I, would, I, I, I would cook it in hot pot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've heard, it, especially like in the United States, they sell their like pig's organs or mm. or cow's organs to overseas markets. Yes, and, and yes. China imported a lot. Yes, of, yes. a lot of those. So I think your hometown Seattle is more like Chengdu because they all have the very slow tempo of life. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, the first time that you got here, you feel like this is also your hometown, <laughs> is it? Uh, yes, and not just the slow tempo of life, but also now Chengdu is known for its uh, science. Oh. Mm. And mm. Um, it's research and development in yes. science and you guys uh, have Microsoft uh, of course uh, Seattle you know has Microsoft and uh, Starbucks well, <laughs> Starbucks <laughs> is not a high, high tech company but, okay. uh, uh, Amazon yes. and uh, Boeing oh. uh, so yeah it's a really high tech place mm. and so is Chengdu so in that respect yes. definitely but Chengdu is becoming more high tech. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, yes. A decade ago, it wasn't as high tech as. So. Yes. Yeah, when it first came, it, mm -hmm. it wasn't known for it. Mm -hmm. Of course. It's known for like panda. Yes, and yes. Tourism. But now it's known for science also. Mm -hmm. well, speaking of high tech, because actually, Aaron, you're pursuing your doctoral yes. degree in bioengineering. Yes. And actually, for your undergrad study, you studied about bio. Bioengineering? Yeah, it's similar to bio. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, do you feel like there is a growing sense of technology here, yes. like in China? Yes, I think Chengdu has a very successful transformation from, uh, you know, city which is famous because it's a um, tribal size or tourist attraction, mm -hmm. to, um, mm, I think it's very, very important, uh, very successful to uh, a high-tech city. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I think the local government is very, very um, emphasized the uh, high-tech development and put a lot of money funds and uh, I think a lot of land to the uh, high tech zone and mm -hmm. uh, maybe the incubation zone. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's a very, very far sighting uh, policy. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. Be because right now in Chengdu, I believe there are about 60, 16 million people living here. And yes. a lot of them are actually immigrants. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, the other day I was speaking with another friend and uh, he was mentioning about a hot pot. Hot pot is, is a such a is inclusive dish because yes. people just put it in what they prefer and they can eat yes. together or can share yes. um, and some people would say like society or community here in Chengdu is also somewhat inclusive uh, do you think so Jonathan because you know you've been living here for 21 years with a different phase but you can speak perfect Chengdu dialect <laughs> right now uh, yeah it's a very uh, inclusive uh, society here um, mainly because over many past generations, they've always had immigrants here mm -hmm. uh, from outside provinces yes. uh, and they brought in their own local flavors. I mean, even the chili pepper from that we use, uh, all of it came from America. outside yes. and America and uh, so it really ta brings out the best. Mm. It, 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 brings all these flavors together mm -hmm. and makes it their own. Yeah. So Chengdu is also known for its creativity. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then as a local, because right now in Chengdu is kind of divided into the older downtown area uh, and then a newer, yeah. like a mm. developing really fast area, mm -hmm. like the high tech zone as Aaron mentioned and also yes. this Tianfu new area. Mm -hmm. But how do you feel about this? Like as a local, and there are as increasing number of immigrants are you happy with it? Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of my hometown. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think uh, this di different make our life more, mm -hmm. um, uh, have many diver diversity, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, because uh, I used to film, interview many guests 
in my program. Mm -hmm. um, if they are um, the high tech zone companies in high tech um, district, mm -hmm. um, and more and more um, talent come mm -hmm. to Chengdu yes. recently, yes, mm -hmm. I feel this very strong. Mm -hmm. So um, with the construction of Chengdu, yes. it attracts many people around the world come here. You mentioned about this influx of like younger workers, younger white collar workers, but then like Aaron mentioned, like when you first came to Chengdu yes. seven, 17 years ago, yes. because you feel like there's a slower pace here in Chengdu. Yes. But because of the influx of younger people, because I'm currently living in the high tech oh, town, yeah. the, the pace is being kind of somewhat amped up. I know. But, but I think it's still there is a, a little bit difference between, you know, the um, old city and the um, maybe the new tech zone or the uh, Tianfu new zone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think maybe the, the main reason is still that uh, the people live in this zone are so different. Because in the, in the high tech zone? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that most of the people live in high tech zone are new immigrants mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. also called new Chengdu. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of them are, I think, from, come from the other province. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think they're the life temple there is more faster than the old mm -hmm. city because I live in the old city, Shuangnan. It's very famous uh, in, in the whole Chengdu. Mm -hmm. uh, the life temple there is still, I think, did not change any from the day I got here, mm -hmm. uh, 17 years. So definitely the, the, the city is becoming more diversified with the parts that is more pre preserved for its culture and yes, old yes. deep roots, mm -hmm. and then they have yes. the like fast growing, yes. expanding, yeah. like yes. higher rises. Let's move back to our hot pot, and the next dish that we're going to show is intestine. big intestine. <laughs> On your favorite? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Anna's okay. favorite. And um, so we we'll just stop it. We'll yeah, just this one. You just stop in and let mm -hmm. it, let it, uh, let it boil for a while. And, and how long usually? I would. Would you say about five minutes? Yeah, five minutes. But is this pre cooked already? All right. Yeah, it's pretty cooked, but mm. uh, you know, is it, let it mix with the hot pot flavors. Yes, it, it's you know, uh, you could let it cook for a little while in, mm. the, in the spicy pot. And also, I know like uh, duck in intestine uh, yeah. is also very popular. In. Yes, exactly. And you mentioned about like pig throat mm. and cow and also, throat. Mm. Yeah. So what are some of the reasons why like animal organs are are the actually the most iconic dishes for hot pot or actually people's favorite? I, anyone, <laughs> so anyone well, actually, it's story. because of the historical uh, for historical reasons. When hot pot with the chili and Sichuan pepper goins was becoming developed, it was along the rivers uh, in Sichuan and Chongqing, it was the really poor laborers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who couldn't the afford- The fisherman, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, who couldn't afford uh, like the meats. Mm -hmm. uh, they just took what uh, you know they could get for almost free, mm -hmm. um, leftovers from the butchers. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, those things those innards, they all have, you know, strong flavors. Yes. So one way to get rid, you know, to, to get, get rid, rid of those, flavor. those strong flavors is to have a pot that's so spicy. Mm -hmm. So that's really how a hot pot was developed, and mm -hmm. that's why those uh, innards are still appreciated with, mm -hmm. with hot pot. Yes. But then, as I mean, from the history, we learned that hot pot it hasn't been like very gourmet, like where it is like really high end, mm -hmm. but in today's society, price for hot pot is is getting higher and higher as the popularity mm -hmm. rises. Mm -hmm. For example, like in, Shen, in Shanghai and in Beijing, uh, mm -hmm. I ran into a hot pot restaurant. They are mm -hmm. charging about fifty U.S. dollars per person, yeah. fifty to sixty dollars per person. <coughs> so how do think about this? Because still in Chengdu, we have like more affordable choices, but yes. across China, it's becoming expensive. What's your take on this? I think there are many new style hot pots emerged in recent years, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the, the servant, servant style changed. The service? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
That's that's update. Yeah, that's Shen Shen Yeah, servant update. Yeah. Servant update. Uh -huh. and so it cost uh, much. Mm -hmm. So they can add more premiums. Yeah, yeah. premiums. Yeah. And actually, historically, when it was the really poor people eating, they would <laughs> reuse the oil, mm -hmm. reuse the oil, yeah. and mm -hmm. now. It's forbidden. It, it's forbidden mm. because it's not as healthy mm. to yes. reuse the oil. Yes. So every time we come to have a hot pot, we have to use the new oil. Yes. So that adds to the cost. Mm -hmm. yes. And then uh, people nowadays uh, ha prefer a little better environment when they're mm -hmm. eating. Mm -hmm. yes. So that adds to the cost. Mm -hmm. And they prefer better service, so mm -hmm. that adds to the cost. But you could still find relatively cheap places. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this place isn't that expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you can find really expensive places, yeah. especially like in Shanghai or yeah. Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had some very expensive hot pot experiences there. Actually, you mentioned about the, the, the ban, the Chinese government's ban on, on on cow, on beef fat. Yes. So one of the reasons, of course, for, for food safety. But just speaking of beef fat, um, I just learned that Actually, a lot of hot pot restaurants, they actually import beef fat from America or uh, other parts of China, uh, other parts of the world, because you mentioned about like, yeah. uh, you asked Jonathan this before. Yes. I found actually beef fat is much more affordable in overseas markets, to be honest. I've asked uh, two hot pot owners, they were expanding into America or into Japan, mm -hmm. and they found it's just impossible for them to ship like their soup <coughs> over there just because they contain animal fat. Oh. But they can actually get animal fats locally and the price is actually is more affordable compared to China. It's just a fun fact, I think. Do you think that the, the intestine is, is is cooked now or shall we wait for I a think she's the expert like yeah, that. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's good? Uh, what should we try? What, what? Because it's already cooked. So yeah. it won't time. be that, <laughs> that bad, okay. right? Uh, And it's not a rocket science that uh, as the the pot is boiling, uh, there is a lot of steam, and regularly that we need to add yeah. more broth, right? Mm -hmm. More stock into it. <coughs> and then we ask the waiter to help us out. Mm -hmm. uh, we can add some water. So what I found quite interesting, like eating hot pot here in Chengdu, is like. The flavor doesn't really tame down as we pour more broth into the soup. Are there any particular secrets behind that? Um, well, actually some hot pots, they actually get hotter and hotter mm -hmm. as they go on. Yeah. But that's because uh, maybe they use the cow's oil and they add a lot of fresh, not fresh, but extra dried uh, Pepper. peppers on top. Mm -hmm. and then they add, they keep eating spice. Mm -hmm. But uh, with this, we put most of the peppers in with the, cook them with the uh, oil to begin with. <coughs> so it, it kind of evens out. Mm -hmm. So you add more uh, broth and then the spice just gets a little bit more. So it pretty much evens out. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but then just, Talking about like eating hot pot and owning a, a hot pot place as a foreigner here, do you find it's kind of challenging sometimes? Like when, the, uh, when you first start? Um, well, I think there's a kind of fun thing that a lot of people, when they first hear that ah, a foreigner has opened a hot pot place, they're like, maybe not. Oh, it maybe thing. must be a, a <laughs> West <laughs> that, That's what I'm going to question about. <laughs> yeah. West, Western, Western flavor. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, we try to keep it as, as local as possible. Mm. Well, actually, what, that's what I found quite interesting here in Chengdu, because you're, you know, Jonathan is very special because Jonathan opened a hot pot, a lo like original cuisine style restaurant, like hot pot restaurant. But then there are also a lot of experts are opening restaurants here mm. in, in Chengdu. And a lot of them, they're trying to 
like put more like local regional like Chengdu flavors into their dishes. Just this morning, earlier morning, I talked with a Israeli chef, opened a pizza place, mm -hmm, yeah. and they're starting to put more. <coughs> Um, you know, Israeli dish is more like a Mediter Mediterranean. It's quite, it's, it could be a, quite a different, a challenging thing for people from China to actually give it a try. So they start to put more like local things, like mm -hmm. people who prefer here in China. And you've met a lot of foreign uh, experts here in Chengdu. How do you think, like, how are they adjusting to the community here? Mm, I. Uh, you mean the hot pot from? Uh, no, not hot pot. It's just like for for all different expats living here in Chengdu, how are they adjusting to their life here? Like because you you interview many of them. Um, I, I think um, uh, every time when I <coughs> ask them, do you like spicy food? Do mm -hmm. you like uh, get use of the Chengdu food? Mm -hmm. They say yes. They are very delicious, mm -hmm. and I get very I get use of it. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe they, they, they have made some local friends mm -hmm. personally and uh, uh, and then receive the mm -hmm. lifestyle in Chengdu mm. one day by day. So before the live starts and the Hannah and I had a brief conversation about like how like foreign people, when the foreign friends, expats coming to Chengdu, they can start to sound local and like Jonathan speaks really yeah. perfect Chengdu dialect. Mm -hmm. So, do you think there are some reason behind that? Why is that like for your like expats, like can speak fluent Chengdu dialect? I think, uh, at least for me, it's when I first <coughs> came to Chengdu, I just wanted to learn more about the culture, mm -hmm. experience the culture, learn more about the food, mm -hmm. and naturally, I need I wanted to learn the local language. Um, I think. Uh, a lot of people like to learn the local language because, well, for two reasons. It's actually very much like Mandarin. Mm -hmm. So a lot, anyone who can speak Mandarin can pretty much all understand Chandu dialect. Um, and also, it's just that the city has so much charm mm -hmm. that people want to interact with the locals. Do you, do you find it's easier to study like, like Chindu dialect or, or the Mandarin? Well, um, the way I studied, mm -hmm. I just uh, hung out with my friends mm -hmm. and uh, from local friends, right? <coughs> local friends, and learned it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, back then, twenty years ago, there weren't any classes mm -hmm. to learn it, so I had to learn it mm -hmm. on my own through my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's probably not a, the easiest way to do it. Okay. But uh, if you have the time, mm -hmm. then it's probably one of the best ways to do it. Mm. But then Aaron, yeah. both of us from northern part of China, yes. and um, sometimes it's really hard for me to learn <laughs> yes. a different dialect. Yes. But do you find some sometimes Chengdu dialect can really influence how we sound, how we say, okay. how we speak? Uh, you know, the, the dialect from my hometown is basically the Mandarin. Because we are so close to Beijing, mm -hmm. so uh, I think at first I feel a lot of difficult um, difficulty in my learning of Sichuan dialect. Uh, the first word, uh, the first expression I learned, uh, I still remember it so deeply because it's ba shi in uh. Mandarin. In, in Sichuan dialect, it's ba shi, ba shi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's it's a so expressive word mm -hmm. because I think it includes so many meanings mm -hmm. because. Uh, when you feel it's delicious, you can yeah. say ba shi. Yes. Uh, when you feel it's so comfortable, you can say ba shi. Yes. And uh, even when you feel it's very cheap, you can say ba shi. Yeah. So it's, it's, I think it's so expressive. And another so, word yeah. is like yao de. Yao de, yao de. It's like, it's like okay. yes, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. yes. But it can also be great, perfect, um, awesome. Yes, so yeah. many yeah. meanings. Yeah. And it, it, means. it basically can answer any questions <laughs> if you are positive about, yes. about it. Yes, yes. But then, just what about because you own this place? What dish has been ordered the most, like in your experience here, because of fame? I would say the tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had friends who came here, and one person orders one could eat five five dishes of tribe. Oh. Oh, five five, five dishes. Just one person. Yes. 
per person. But I know there are a lot of people they can eat beef very, they can oh, eat yeah. a large <coughs> amount, right? But try it. But like it makes your food easier for me. I feel like. Um, it, it, it's, well, the tripe, it's got such an interesting texture mm -hmm. and it, the interplay of, with the flavors, uh, a lot of people really love that the most. Mm. But one, what about, like, uh, one go, go of my friends yeah. can eat tripe, banji. Oh, it's about, uh, once. Mm. well, banji, it's about uh, 25, uh, 250 uh, grams. Uh, yeah. 250 yeah, about grams. About uh, half a pound? About half, half a pound. pound. I don't Over think it's, it, it's, it's yeah. healthy because it's animal algae. It's not healthy, biologically. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so actually, um, because some our viewers ask, requested Jonathan uh, or Jonathan, <laughs> um, can you say something in Sichuan dialect to our viewers? Just say hi to them. Uh, at which camera that should he be looking at? This one, I guess. Yeah.各位观众朋友们，大家好，我叫张楠，欢迎到我们这个远位的火锅，来品尝火锅，叫我们。几个帅哥美女去，欢迎来成都，谢谢。谢谢。哦，对，还有特别欢迎你们来成都耍。Hannah, do you want to translate a little bit for us? I yeah, um, Chengdu is known. I look at. Yeah, okay. Oh, I mean, can you like translate what what Jonathan said? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Jonathan said, um, hello everyone. Uh, I am a Chengdu. Person, but from <laughs> Seattle, yeah. and I am running a hot pot restaurant in Chengdu City. And welcome to Chengdu. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of funny because uh, not funny, it's very interesting. interesting. It is. It's like uh, Jonathan has a Chinese name. Uh, Jonathan has a Chinese name called uh, Jiangnan. Jiangnan mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but Jiangnan in Ch in Chinese, it can also means like the the southern oh. bank of the Yangtze River. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick that name? Well, actually, <coughs> it's that's a, it's a subtle difference from that name. Yes, I have a, a, an um, extra a mouth, a mouth on yes. the side of the nan, uh -huh. uh, uh, so it completely changes the meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have the the surname of John, mm -hmm. and uh, there's which means river, mm -hmm. and there's a. A lot of rivers in, in Sichuan, of mm. course, and uh, it it kind of st it starts with, with a J, like Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan. Yeah. Yes, and then the Nan actually is quite important and, and interesting because it, it has a mouth, and yes. Uh, mm. yes. not only I do a lot of television shows, mm. where I can talk, do a lot of gourmet shows, yes. we have to eat, mm -hmm. and uh, it just kind of fit perfectly. Yes. And and actually, that that word also means speaks. I think in Chinese, right? Nan 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 nan. 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 No. Uh, yeah. So, I'm um, going to ask, look if there's any questions from the from the internet. For let me. Someone is asking about again the difference between Chengdu Hapa and Chongqing Hapa. Uh, but then for Aaron, yes. like you mentioned, you, you feel like the personalities between the yes. that from yes. the between the uh, from the different regions, different parts yes. um, are somewhat different. But then for Hannah and Jonathan, do you feel the same? Like people from Chengdu or people from Chongqing somewhat different? Like you are you're different from a, your friend from Chongqing, are you? My friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like for people from Chongqing, do you feel like there is a subtle difference be between you and the uh, the neighbors? Uh, some some difference. Mm -hmm. I I think Ch Chengdu people is more is mild, and uh, Chongqing people mm -hmm. is more ha harder. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. Yes. And they are thin. Mm -hmm. More thin. The the body. Oh, you're yeah, thinner, yeah, you're slimmer, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's much more mountainous there. Yeah, they have, <laughs> they have, they have, they have to walk so up and down the stairs yes. all the time. Uh -huh. So they're much thinner, yeah. and the weather is hot, weather even hotter, hotter than than Chengdu. Than than so the people there are even hotter there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But how could we explain the, the people in Chengdu is much better looking? I think they are much better looking than the people in, in Chengdu. When I first got Chongqing, I was, 
all the boys and the girls are so pretty. Mm. And I even asked them, do you have some um, plastic See? jobs? <laughs> 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 they said, we do not have that money. Mm. They, they are just natural. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know why. Where the things like about beauty, I think it's just because it's, it, oh. it's a personal oh, pre yes. preference, yes. right? But yes. I know like for people from Chongqing, they typically have the like pointy nose, a thin mm. nose, mm -hmm. bigger eyes. Mm. Yes. But, but I think a lot of people from Chengdu, they, they also have pretty faces and, and etc. But then speaking of cuisine, speaking, because right now in Chengdu, we're holding this food festival. We have a lot of different dishes from all over the world. But in generally speaking, do you think Chinese cuisine is somewhat inclusive compared to other types of uh, Western food? Like Jonathan? Uh, yeah, I think that now, after being here for 20 years, I've seen they've, that Western food is becoming more popular, mm -hmm. opening up, because a lot of uh, uh, Chinese students have gone overseas yes. and experienced a lot of uh, local flavors overseas. And when they come home, maybe it's, maybe they miss some of those flavors. <coughs> so, uh, you know, they're they're more, you know, they can they're more accustomed to mm -hmm. trying new things. And yes. and Chengdu people are are becoming very adaptable, mm -hmm. and, and they have been because yeah. uh, of their history. So, I think uh, foreign foods are are very welcome here. Mm. But then what about Aaron? Because Tianjin was among the first group of cities in yes. China opened up to the, the rest of the world. Yes. And Tianjin is probably the, one of the first international cities here in yes. China. Yes, yes. In Qing Dynasty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean about... I, I, yeah, uh, speaking of like a reform and opening up right now. Okay. But, but then, do you found Chengdu is somewhat... Like, uh, it's becoming more open up and international? Yes. Uh, when I first got here, I, it's so curious for me that um, in such a you know inland city, mm -hmm. it's so opening because there are so many foreign people here, mm -hmm. and uh, they all seem like like this place. I um, when I got here, uh, when I live here for a much longer time, I found this this place culture is so inclusive. Mm -hmm. I never I never feel I don't belong here mm -hmm. because uh, you know in some of China's um, city, uh, if you do not speak the local dialect, you will definitely be cheated by some, maybe for example, taxi driver, or something like this, driver, yes, yeah. yes, but uh, I've never met such a thing here in Chengdu, and mm -hmm. I never heard any f of my friend complain about this stuff. Wow. Mm, yes. I agree with you. <laughs> yes. Hannah is a proud Chengduer, <laughs> yes. yes. yeah. These people are so nice, enthusiastic and mm -hmm. warm-hearted. So, so uh, now, about like, we will basically finish most of our meat dishes. What about like vegetables? Are there a specific way to cook those? Well, um, we have like uh, that's asp yeah. asparagus lettuce. Uh, the yeah. Lettuce, yeah, we just dump those in mm -hmm. into the pot. Mm -hmm. um, the tomato we can dump in the pot. Yes. And this, uh, it's very thin, so even just four seconds is mm. So actually this, um, <coughs> I only start to know like, Cucumber can be eaten in a hot pot of <laughs> when, when oh I came to, to to Chengdu yeah. in fact and, and to slice so thin. Yeah. So um I'm gonna ask my camera to to zoom in on this cucumber slice. <laughs> it's very thin. We take this as a fruit it's in, in yeah, North China. In yes. China yes, it's, it's more fruit. like a fruit. We, yes. we eat it raw. Yeah. But it can also be eaten, you know, in hot pot. And actually, the flavor is very fresh because the cucumber, you know, is very watery, mm -hmm. yeah. crisp. It's very but crisp, you, so you don't want to over, over, do, overcook it, or it won't be as crisp. Yeah. I think there is a disadvantage of this cucumber putting in hot pot because it could absorb so much of this sauce. Mm -hmm. It would become so spicy. Especially <laughs> for vegetables, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, the, the vegetables are spicier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially green leafy vegetables. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. They're usually too spicy for most people. Do you think that's also the reason why people put vegetables after meat? Oh, Maybe, yes. yeah. Maybe. Because of the meat, it could uh, possibly take out yes. some of the spices. This, this is the right way. Just, just like this. Do not just drop it into uh. the pot. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, some some people believe that if you do the vegetables first. 
there's a lot of water in the vegetables. Yes. Oh, yes. And it will affect the broth. Mm -hmm. Yes. And make it less spicy, but the vegetables won't be less spicy. Yes. Mm. It's just the meats that will be less spicy. Yes. So I think because of the sake of time, and we need to wrap up here, but I guess we're going to continue to eat a little bit. But thanks for watching with us. Thanks for staying with us and watching this episode. And of course, uh, remember to follow us on Weibo, uh, YouTube, and Facebook, our official CTN accounts, as well as, well as uh, you know, download our e application on your mobile devices. If you, if you want to stay, you know, have more episodes like this, you know, dining with us or exploring China and, of course, the rest of the world. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I guess we can just oh, keep continue. eating. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice.